insisted on doing that. He forgot to shave. Yes, he did. Uh, there's a. I got, oh, we got. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're good to go. Wow. Thanks, Gary, for the kind words. Uh, I would like to thank and express my gratitude to Jim and Lynn Maroney, Father Dennis, Father Peter Verhalen, Father Paul McCormick, and the rest of the Cistercian community. I'm very humbled and honored to be bestowed with this outstanding award. It is very fulfilling and gratifying to be acknowledged by peers and fellow alumni for our ongoing and successful efforts directly affecting the Cistercian School and Abbey community. I'm following many excellent award recipients, all of who are advancing the legacy of such a unique and special place. It is very rewarding to see exterior spaces I've assisted in designing and creating being so well received and embraced by both the school and Abbey. As the son of Sam and Leslie Hawker, I learned the value of hard work and, an entre and, and a thirst for continual knowledge. Sam instilled within me a strong entrepreneurial work ethic and an insatiable appetite for history. As a matriarch of the family, Leslie is the consummate teacher. I always was encouraged to excel at all my creative endeavors. This led to my exposure of art and drawing at a young age, and thus the crucial development of my young or right side of the brain. I had the privilege of being taught by incredible art teachers over my early years, both Sarah Wilder at St. Michael's and Roberto Munguia while at Cistercian. My parents recognized early the need to keep me in challenging environments, thus the enrollment into Cistercian Preparatory School. Entering into Father Henry's class of 96 at Form 3 was interesting as I was considered a new kid, along with several other new initiates. However, however Father Henry took us under his wing, and this was the beginning of a fantastic six-year voyage that created a strong and lasting impression on me. I sincerely thank my parents for granting me these opportunities and privileges all of which were vital in constructing the path that I'm traveling. The following presentation is organized around three elements or collective experiences that are extremely important and defining to my life. Call them foundation, metamorphosis, and creation. <clears throat> so foundation. My years of matriculation at Cistercian built an incredibly strong foundation for future learning and cultural experiences. As the years pass, my sense of pride for Cistercian grows, creating an even stronger bond and connection to a very special place and community. The other day, I asked my mom how I ended up at Cistercian, and she replied with the following account. Well, in sixth grade at St. Michael's School, you applied and tested for entry to St. Mark's, EST, and Green Hill, a one-time process used by these schools at the time. Sometime after that, you asked me if those scores went to Cistercian. I was very surprised. No one at St. Michael's had applied there, and I did not know how much or I did not know much about the school and did not know how you even knew about it. I told you no, that they had their own application process. You said you wanted to test there. I took you out to the school and Father Henry was administering the testing. The first thing you said afterwards while getting into the car was, I want to go to school here. We thought we should visit, and fortunately there was there was an open house. I was hosted, or we were hosted by, fa I was hosted by faculty while Sam and I went separately on our own. Upon meeting back together, we discovered we were all blown away by this remarkable school led by extraordinary educators and mentors. You interviewed with Father Peter, and fortunately we did not know 22 young men had applied for just three spots. You were admitted to Form 3 and Father Henry was your form master. It was divine guidance and he and Cistercian had a profound effect on all of us. While at Cistercian, I had the opportunity to play football under the leadership of Coach Tom Hillary and Coach Steve McCarthy. I have extremely fond memories of both my on and off field activities. Plenty of lighthearted banter with Coach McCarthy, camaraderie with fellow teammates, championship seasons, a particular foul mouth episode I had on the field during a game that ended with Coach Hillary grabbing my face mask and having a few stern words with me. <laughs> Needless to say, I made up for my penalty out of strict fear of disappointing Tom Hillary. Our coaches always demanded the best of us. I will never forget a senior year conversation I had while visiting with Headmaster Father Bernard. I was in his office to review my college application process he looked down at the transcripts and then said to me, you're only applying to one school? Are you sure? 
most everybody in my class was applying to quite a few different East Coast schools. So I responded yes, and I did only apply to one school, Texas A&M, and was accepted to their five-year landscape architecture program. I grew up working with plants in the outdoor environment. This, this strong association with plant material and building materials, plus an artistic talent, led to the pursuit of a degree in this field. I graduated from Texas A&M Texas with my degree in landscape architecture. While attending this university, I spent two semesters studying design and architecture in Italy. These two memorable semesters fueled my fascination with how things are designed, constructed, and even deconstructed. Since graduation, I've had an insatiable appetite for designing, building, and learning. So metamorphosis. My, li my, my life experiences in the Tuscan region of Italy became my metamorphosis. I can honestly pinpoint the fall of 1999 as a transformative, life-altering event that expanded my horizons and infused me with a newfound zeal for life and affirmed my passion for design and construction. I had never traveled outside of the USA, and having enrolled in the fourth year study abroad program at Santa Chiara with Texas A&M, I found myself dropped right in the middle of rural, Tus or rural Italy in the small hill town of Castiglione Fiorentino and their surrounding Val di Chiana. I offloaded at the train station at the bottom of the hill and thus began the experience of a lifetime. I found myself a sponge soaking up knowledge and culture this experience helped to validate and enrich many of the fundamental elements I had formed while a student at Cistercian. It woke a sleeping giant within, if you will. This metamorphosis brought forth the realization of all things that I am passionate about in life. I returned home with a newfound motivation and drive for the field of landscape architecture. I had also yet a met a young Italian, Gisela Borghi. <laughs> I met my lovely wife, Gisela, while studying during the fall of 1999. A year later, I convinced the architecture department to allow me to f spend the fall semester of 2000 at Santa Chiara, where I would work in the kitchen while enrolled in my fifth year design studio. I'm pretty sure they will not do that again. <laughs> I now have family and friends uh, in Italy, and we travel back, Gisela and I, several times a year to Gisela's hometown of Lucignano pictured here, this intimate medieval city. Giselle is a very well-respected creative consultant within the fashion industry and a talented photographer. She is a constant source of strength and intellect within our relationship. She continually inspires me to be a better person. This connection to Italy continues to shape and inform my design sensibilities. I observe many of the exceptional examples of historic urban piazzas the inherent patterns prevalent in both the rural and agricultural landscapes and the constructed post-war industrial areas up and down the valley. I'm fascinated with the spaces between and creating extremely beautiful functional spaces for people. Creation. I have over 13 years of experience in landscape architecture and a vast knowledge of horticulture contributed to over 17 cumulative years in the broader landscape construction and maintenance industry. I launched Hawker Design Group in 2005, approaching each project with a strong hands-on methodology that results in a unique level of commitment and success to each project. As a design principal, I extract influence from surrounding architecture and contextual influences to create outdoor spaces with a clear aesthetic, an approach that is heavily influenced by my time spent in Italy. I respond to unique design challenges with a commitment to providing responsible and innovative solutions. Creative use of sustainable materials and native and adaptive plants across each site is integral to the design process I've established. My, ex my experience extends beyond the drawing board by giving each project personal attention during time, during, uh, during design as well as construction. At the very uh, core of my firm's work is a mission to establish landscape as a cohesive link between a project's architecture and site. Texas and the surrounding regions provide endless exposure to a diverse mix of urban, rural, and agricultural landscape patterns. My intimate knowledge of these native landscapes is integral to the design, uh, to the design process. The work of Hawker Design Group includes collaboration on project typologies of residential, institutional, corporate, and mixed-use projects across the country. 
Whether a small urban residential terrace and garden or an urban infill mixed use project, we approach each site and its unique characteristics with an openness to, to collaboration and design exploration. The work is anchored in connectivity to a region's ecology, natural geographic features, strong programmatic development, and an overarching desire to create beautiful, simple spaces that exhibit the art of restraint. Our leadership and process has earned us accolades in national and international publications, as well as many design awards, including several, inter, uh, several national honor awards in a very short period of time since the firm's inception. I, received, I did receive several requests for uh, tonight to present some of the current portfolio, so the following is a selection of both built and in-progress works, many of which have been in collaboration with Gary Cunningham, as stated before. This project was housed in a historic Dallas Power and Light building, uh, a Dallas Power and Light electrical substation building built in the 1926. It's a new art space, and, gar and the garden invites artists to respond to the raw character of the architecture, offering an alternative to the traditional gallery and museum context. Along with the interior spaces, an urban, gal uh, an urban uh, gallery has sprung to life within the former industrial compound. As with much of the architectural and interior design, the site became an exercise in reclamation and reuse. This was a small residential project that emphasized a desire by the client to master plan the site to enhance the landscape surrounding an existing house and incorporate a new studio uh, into the space, both sided for vistas towards an adjacent pond a bluestone step, or a set of bluestone steps descend down to this small little boardwalk that creates an overlook at the existing pond. Can we do that at Cistercian? <laughs> we do have a pond at Cistercian, and I believe that as part of the ultimate master plan would be accessing that more. <laughs> it will get old if I say which projects are Cunningham projects. This is one, but there's quite a few in this portfolio that we'll look at. This was a residential landscape, worked on, uh, the house uh, was designed by Gary, and it emerged as a very holistic approach to the design of both house and garden through an intensive collaboration. The, land, uh, the interdisciplinary dialogue very early decided, for example, to save and transplant an existing 20-inch caliper pecan tree that was sited within the footprint of the future house. The house and garden function as one flexible, active, and resilient space with dissolved boundaries and transitions between interior and exterior. This is a very fun project. This is a small contemporary uh, house that is situated in an established neighborhood in the dense 1920s um, sort of master planned University Park area. The street side approach to the home features a continually uh, evolving view into nature where we decided to replace sort of the neighborhood standard of a front yard mown lawn with a woodland that is viewed each day by the owner through a series of windows from the inside out. This was a project that uh, worked on with Gary as well that received quite a few awards on multiple levels. This pool house serves as an urban <laughs> retreat for an artist who lives next door. The house in the space, a pool ha the house in the space, a pool house, functions as a center for the family and social gatherings, successfully accommodating uh, varying sized crowds. This two story box was tucked discreetly behind the rear of the site, creating opportunity for a series of transitional garden spaces. The central spine of the site is a six foot high privacy wall. This sculptural uh, element is a stainless steel cage filled with blue recycled glass slag. And this element, as you see here, when lit, is quite striking and created our garden wall. We'll work uh, on any level. This is up on the 27th and 28th floor of a residential tower near downtown Dallas. Again, the idea of inserting horticulture at any sort of environment is important and um, always a fun challenge. The penthouse has two terraces in this particular project and 
uh, each one is based on their relationship to the interior spaces and how they're oriented uh, to either towards the skyline or towards the actual Trinity River. You can see how the views of the Trinity River and the Kalachava Bridge beyond. Another fun project with Gary. This urban renovation was a really interesting infill project on the western fringe of Fort Worth's vibrant downtown district. It inter it, the design emphasizes the interstitial spaces between two early 20th century buildings. And the native grasses consistently animate the space along with the mesquite tree, which seems to be a common thread in quite a few of my projects. Um, it was a fun project. Urban infill is, always has an interesting set of challenges. A project that was early in Gary's career and then redone all, the, uh, finally I got an opportunity to get a hold of the exterior on this project. Um, this was another DPNL building and uh, this one was transformed into a single residence and had a little bit more space than the one that we saw prior. Exterior is an urban uh, experience and it's located right near the Katy Trail. We use lots of uh, buffalo grass, wildflowers, and groves of East Necklace trees. Um, along the western edge, you can see we created this boulder plant that we're growing these high rise live oaks out of that are acting as shading devices for the very tall windows that have a western exposure along the building there. And it became really an artful intervention, but very functional application and then extended what we had started across the street over to the office with a very low maintenance landscape that consists primarily of boulder plants fitted together. Again, I knew it would get old, but this is another Gary project. This was down in Wimberley. Again, a very fun project of building, um, from my standpoint, we were building backwards because we built the pool first and then started to attach and build the building behind it. Uh, this was because we were building literally on top of a hill above the Blanco River Valley, and it was an incredibly challenging site. Uh, it basically meant being down there on site while the crane was, ex or while they were excavating for the house, utilizing large boulders that were being pulled out of the ground to retain the area for the pool, and then just sort of work our way backwards. So this is really the tail end of the project, working back. But again, very, uh, very beautiful site, and, and again, very fun project. I don't really like working on anything that doesn't have really a set of severe challenges, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Distortion included. So what are the challenges? <laughs> it may just be different challenges. Um, Chip, can we get a little applause? Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. One of my, uh, so one of my we favorite were projects. A challenge on that. I know. I didn't just say you guys were a challenge. Just you, Chip. Just you, Chip. Just, you, Chip. just me. Gary's right. Just Chip. Right. Nancy was perfect. Yeah. Nancy's only issue was the critters that came with the native landscape. <laughs> um, this was a fantastic project, again, that took really a tabula rasa site. There was nothing on this property prior to construction. In fact, we were discussing earlier that the neighborhood had literally just sort of assumed it was part of the White Rock Lake Park, and were very surprised to see a structure going up. But eventually, once plantings started to go in, I think it really just changed the dynamic. And I believe you even had people coming up and buzzing and saying, oh, we really like it. You know, you're planting trees. We're good with this now. <laughs> this is a great project. Um, the day or two it snows here was very photogenic. <laughs> Fantastic screen porch. It's a really fun project. The Belmont Hotel, this was an early project for me. And this is a historic preservation of uh, Charles Dilbeck's 1946 Motor Court Hotel. This was a very sort of organically done mm -hmm. project where we were out just trying to cut away at what had now become a very vehicular uh, project or a vehicular site and carve away space to really start to insert, insert horticulture in the site, make it a much more pedestrian friendly um, experience. 
It's been a it's been a catalyst. I live over in Oak Cliff now. It's been a this project was a catalyst for a lot of development within West uh, the West Dallas corridor, and um, has been successful. It was a very risky project at the time for the owners. This is a recent project that was just finished, and this was on about seven acres out near Cedar Creek Lake. For all the bocce aficionados, this was a very technical and, and fun uh, bocce court we designed on this particular project. It had a, an amazing existing stand of uh, pine trees that we really worked hard to integrate within the overall master plan so that our loss to the trees was very, very minimal. Again, you see a lot of the common details that we're using throughout sites, and a lot of these are applied as well to the Cistercian campus, permeable paving, uh, gravels, stone. We've not done a fireplace at Cistercian. I'm not sure that we could make it to the cut. Some of the end project, uh, people had asked, what are you working on now? Uh, project we've been working on a long time, which is actually about to get funded, is looking at the north entrance to the Dallas Museum of Art. This has been a fun project because it actually is a fairly small scale uh, urban renovation of what's primarily just a driveway. And now with the success of Clyde Warren Park, the museum is seeing a lot of opportunity to really engage with park users and pull a lot more attendance through the front door. Um, of the actual museum. And I'm excited that this is finally happening. It's been a long process with a, a committee of, I mean, it's been four or five years in the works. Um, Sylvan 30, this is an interesting mixed use project that is right across the street, catty corner to the Belmont Hotel. So where the Belmont was a big catalyst for a lot of the <coughs> development in West Dallas, this is becoming one of the larger scale developments that's about to be finished. It brought a small organic grocer and is bringing quite a few interesting retail um, concepts into uh, an area that really didn't have much other than the Belmont at the time. So this project is finally about to be finished as well. So there's just some overall pictures of the project. It had, uh, again, a lot of these ideas that we incorporate out of Cistercian are, are really centered around the pedestrian and walkability. So this entire interior of the, the project is curbless and it's very walkable. It's very sustainable. We've got, we worked a lot with the civil engineer on where we direct rainwater. And this was a central bioswell element that becomes a spine down the entire site. I convinced the developer to keep it from being a loop drive and we incorporated a park into the middle that you can kind of see up in the left hand corner. So a lot of successes on um, you know different levels for larger scale mixed use development. They've already had, uh, a, uh, I believe it was a half marathon. So it's becoming, um, it will be incredibly programmed out and ideally a very successful addition to our neighborhood. <coughs> This is a project we were just talking about at the table, and Yuri and I are glad to see that it's finally, and I think we're glad. <laughs> we're glad it's finally under construction. It just has a whole different set of challenges once you actually break ground. But Gary's been working with Temple Emmanuel uh, for a long time. I believe I've been involved since around 2000, 2000, 2008, 2009. But we're taking a really incredible campus and trying to infuse sort of new life, at least from my standpoint, in sort of activating the pedestrian zones. Gary's designed a new sanctuary space, and we're looking at some of the new entry sequences, and, and ultimately still trying to um, sort of restore a lot of the existing tree canopy that was prevalent on this site. Some of the initial sketches from one of the entry sequences. <coughs> Another, another collaboration with Gary on a really cool project in Fort Worth that's about finished. Um, it's a small family compound where they've got a gymnasium, 
offices and a yoga studio and some other leasable space, but it became about creating some very large courtyards in between these barn-like structures. And you can see in this fairly recent aerial, you know, the tree, we were able to salvage a really nice copse of trees between the two buildings on the left. And that really is becoming a really special place for them to gather. And again, um, in looking at that space, you see a lot of, sort of common details that we're trying to incorporate out of the Cistercian campus as well, whether it's through the use of the limestone blocks and seating elements, native planting, permeable paving, but ultimately creating these sort of fantastic spaces where the end user really, really adopts them as their own. A project that's taking us down to the Rio Grande Valley. This is in Westlaco. <coughs> a very interesting area. Um, this one's all about water management and how we're really keeping and maintaining any water that touches the site because they'll go through extreme drought periods and then have flash flood events. So back to sort of my passion with history, we really started to look at how water is management, managed on sites like this through acequias and some of the historical sort of agricultural uh, processes that were used and in incorporating them into a more modern courtyard. And then taking me up to Lyme, New Hampshire, this is a project through a great client that um, both Gary and I have worked with. Um, and this is a project that should be done once it's uncovered by snow. It should be able to be photographed this, this coming spring. It was a very interesting, it was 40 acres on top of a hill above the Connecticut uh, River. And it was a dream come true to be able to work with local stonemasons from sort of that part of the world. You get very used to things going really fast here. It went extremely slow, but the quality is incredible. You just had two guys that were building some of those massive walls. And then we started to look at the geology of the site and we uncovered a lot of the, a lot of the ledge stone and created a series of um, ponds that we're using for irrigation water and reforesting sort of the edges of these, these ponds up there as well. Most of this site, you can kind of see the discoloration there. Most of the site is, is reverting back to sort of a, a, a mountain meadow. So I hope to be up there late this spring. So that kind of gives everybody, I think a lot of, you know, there were some requests for what do you do? What else are you working on? So I was trying to give a little bit of a highlight of that before I got back to sort of the task at hand. So back to Gary. Gary and I have collaborated on many projects, which you saw quite a hand few there. I could have added more, but it would have looked like, I don't know, that might have been a little strange. It would have been entirely... <laughs> Gary centric. I've had the, the great fortune of learning from Gary and I'm always excited to embark on new projects with him. We both had the opportunity of being mentored and taught by Father Henry. What an amazing testament to Father Henry's guidance and character given the long list of students that Father Henry has championed into successful leadership roles within the Cistercian alumni community and beyond. I'm lucky to have formed a close relationship with Gary and I'm proud to consider him a valuable mentor and colleague. Gary trusted me early with the opportunity of working on several of the projects, many of which you just saw during this presentation. Given this incredible opportunity, I've been able to learn and absorb the passion with which Gary brings to visionary projects. I've learned much from Gary's outstanding example. This trust allowed Gary to recruit me to a team of dedicated alumni that are helping to shape the future of not only the Cistercian campus and buildings, but the collective experience of the future students as well. Being a part of this process is extremely fulfilling for me, both as a professional and a former student. Gary, and I, Gary, I sincerely thank you for all you have taught me, all that you continue to teach me, the opportunities you have provided, and for trusting me to be a part of this team. Father Peter has embraced the charge of creating a holistic and more sustainable campus. This passion has spread to the entire Cistercian community, and now Father Paul is championing this landscape vision at the school as well. Thank you both for being great collaborators. Cistercian Preparatory School is a very unique campus. The current 70 acres have been guarded and secured over the years by a very diligent group of alumni to ensure that the Cistercian community will have an enduring legacy 
of a most valuable commodity in our ever-changing urban world, land. The Cistercian School, Chapel, and Abbey are located among the rolling hills of Irving, Texas. Native and adaptive plant material has been planned to replace non-native and invasive species throughout the entire campus. A monumental master planning effort is underway to create a more environmentally friendly and sustainable campus utilizing low water use and low maintenance plantings along with regional stone and more permeable surface such as crust aggregate walkways and courtyards that you've seen throughout this presentation. These landscape approaches assist with active and passive learning opportunities and create a unique environment for the Cistercian community. Projects at Cistercian have consisted of many different scales, small to large, transforming spaces into beautiful and appropriate places for both students, faculty, and the larger Cistercian community. I want to continually be challenged with unique design opportunities. I want to utilize my talents to constantly push the design envelope and bring my designs into reality. The, the resulting synthesis of design and construction is one of the highest quality. I hope to never lose the constant curiosity of how things work or are put together. I'm very fortunate and privileged to have been, to be involved in a profession that I am passionate about. A quote attributed to Confucius that I find appropriate is choose a job you love and you'll never have to work a day in your life. Thank you again to Jim and Lynn Maroney and Cistercian. Good evening.